Washington Post reported how there have been 13 bailouts that Pakistan has received since the 1980s. But somewhere, they have just not gone for those major structural changes that were required to reduce government spending, increasing revenues as well. What do you think has been missing from the economic program of successive governments? Uh, you know, this is a very important uh, question, and I think a, a fundamental question here. Uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, unwilling... Uh, uh, nature of the Pakistani political system to undertake structural reforms that are an imperative now. And now, the, I guess, with this crisis, uh, they will have no choice going forward uh, but to uh, address some of those long-standing issues. What are those issues? I think uh, uh, the first is that Pakistan's uh, bleeding public sector enterprises uh, consume a major chunk of the budget, you know. So there are big white elephants, you know, that need to be either uh, improved, their, their governance needs need, need to improve, or they need to be privatized or partially privatized. You know, the, the railways, the steel mills, I mean, there are dozens and dozens of public sector corporations which basically are a burden on the exchequer and uh, no political government wants to touch them because of uh, because if they downsize or rationalize their workings they will have to lay off people so that's one part the other is of course defense expenditure which of, which has also uh, not really uh, seen any decrease. I mean, it was frozen in the last budget. I mean, that's what the government claimed. Uh, but, you know, it is also important for Pakistan to, to review. And some of the economists have argued that some that some of the wasteful uh, expenditure in the public sector, both in the defense sector, as well in the civilian bureaucracy, needs to be trimmed down. And then, of course, the power sector that I mentioned earlier, you know, all, almost 20 to 30 percent uh, of line losses have been reported in power di distribution. So until you don't fix some of these issues and for, and you're not going to, uh, you know, stabilize in the longer run. I mean, IMF bailouts are just temporary uh, sort of injections that Pakistan is now used to. And uh, and I think uh, this one also will give a reprieve for, for a couple of months. And then in, in about four to six months, it will uh, Pakistan will be back in the same situation until it really doesn't cut down its expenditures. But for all of this, what is important to remember is that you cannot bring about these reforms without a bipartisan consensus, without a political consensus and political stability. In Pakistan, governments are frequently changed. Mm. You know, there's still turmoil going on on the street. I mean, for uh, much of last year, uh, the opposition leader, Imran Khan, was protesting on the streets. Now he wants an early election, and the government doesn't want to go into election. So there's, there's always this political instability mm. that prevents... Uh, uh, you know, arriving at a consensus on key policy reforms that are urgently needed. And final point, why all of this is so has become so critical with foreign exchange reserves dipping to nearly $3 billion or so, is also mm. the fact that the Western assistance mm. to Pakistan has declined tremendously. For decades, Pakistan has been, mm. uh, you know, used to being part of the U.S. global security project, where either it's the Cold War or, uh, you know, the mm. Afghanistan war or the war on terror. And it, you, it was getting all these handouts, you mm. know, lots and lots of, uh, uh, you know, foreign exchange for its mm. services in, in these projects. I mean, they're they are no longer uh, coming un until, of course, U.S. starts bombing another country in the mm. neighborhood, maybe. But God forbid. Uh, so I guess what what Pakistan's elites need to realize is that they have to wake up to a new real, new mm. new reality, a new a, a new geopolitical order, and right. also think of trade, trading with mm. India, trading with with Iran, mm. trading with China and other parts. I mean, it is an imperative now, without which you cannot really think of long term mm. solutions.